across the county on FM, AM and DAB. This This is BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Uh, stews, casserole, suet puddings. We're talking winter food then uh, with Siren Sester cook and food therapist Dulcie James uh, later. I, I, I have a feeling from the lovely wafting smells around, there may be food to taste as well. <laughs> How exciting. In the meantime, the smell that is pervading the studio is just killing me now. Why? Because we were talking the other day, it started as me just saying something as a throwaway comment and then everybody started getting involved. I just said, the minute that, that we had that really severe frost and it was minus four, minus five, and you suddenly say, crikey, you just switch in your brain into winter food and you suddenly want you know, casseroles and stews and you want um, uh, well, just anything really that takes a long time to cook and a long time to digest. It's marvellous, isn't it? Uh, has your tea time menu then switched to winter Winter mode, are you craving a nice hearty casserole, sausage and mash? Definitely the season for suet and slow cookers. Something you can put on in the morning and you come back and there it is, wafting through the house. But what to serve them? Well, Dulcie James is a cook and food therapist from Sarasota. Uh, to say she's not coming in empty-handed would be an understatement. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Anna. <laughs> I, my goodness, we've got about four trays of amazing things. How, how long have you taken to cook all this stuff? It's, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I do cooking demonstrations, OK? And one of the great ones is the winter warming soups that I do and I showed them how to make cheese and asparagus soup and cheddar and tomato soup in oh, under 10 minutes. Shut up. Yeah, too right. So 10 minutes. Is any of the, what, there's some soups here. Which, yep. what, what can I so just dip in and pick please one? Please dip right, in. There's an amazing one here. This is my first. That looks Ooh, look. like uh, cheese and asparagus. So this has got, you know, we were talking about the colours of things. We were talking about the colour of piccalilli the other day, which doesn't seem like anything out of, <laughs> of nature, <laughs> frankly. But this is a lovely sort of gentle, gentle, yellowy, creamy colour. Can yeah. I have a little? Please do. Ooh. So cheese and asparagus, while Anna's trying that one on, that really just uses a tin of asparagus, <gasps> a tiny bit of cheese, milk and a small potato. Nothing That's much else. Amazing. Isn't it clever? You throw the lot in the pan, heat it up, whiz it up, and you're done. Do you know it's got a slightly sort of earthy flavour to it? I guess that's the potato coming through. Could be the asparagus. And it's oh yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. And it's thick. And you, you it's don't, warming. You felt I yeah? went for a winter soup, a winter vegetable soup in a cafe the other day, and I can't tell you how disappointed I was. Not in the flavour, but it was like a consomme. It was like it's a see through. And I, I was I was craving something thick. It wasn't very hearty, Anna. No, and this is hearty as this is. Is lovely. So hearty and wholesome. So just tell are. me again. So the ingredients are what again? So it really is a tin of mm. asparagus. Okay. Um, I use no chicken stock cube. Yeah. Sorry, I'm advertising yeah. on oh, BBC. Sorry, I yeah, don't this... believe it. Uh-huh. But listen, the way I see it is that gives a really rich background flavour. Yeah. And if Marco Pierre White can use it, exactly, it's all right if with it's me. It's good enough for him. Wow. So that that takes seriously ten minutes. It takes, you know, five or ten minutes tops. Really tops. Wow. And at the same time. The red one you've got there is cheddar and tomato. Now this, hang on a minute, because I don't want to spill. That would be a disaster for all It could concerned. be of your equipment. <laughs> yeah, no, that wouldn't be good. Now right, this one so, uses, yes. um, would you believe, some spring onions, again a small amount of cheddar, basil, okay, water, a little bit of milk. Basil coming through. And here's the deal. What makes it tomato is value tomato juice at 65 pence. Really? I mean, you can feed six to eight people on about £2.65 with all the ingredients. I costed it out. Well, it, that's amazing. Because, I mean, you know, food's not but it's cheap. The difference of, of course, course, you know what's gone into it. So mm. it's got uh, all good, wholesome ingredients. Oh, that's zingy. Isn't it? That's got a real nice nice sort of kick to it. That's a wow one. That's lovely. Yeah. Going in for spoonful two. Going for spoonful two. And what a nice colour. Whenever I was ill as a, as a kid... That was the that was the time when I craved tomato. Well, it was Heinz tomato. Heinz soup. tomato. <laughs> and my mum would give me, and I was just like, it was that. And when it was the days when Lucasade was only bought when you were really really ill, and you'd have the gold wrapping the gold. around it. Do you remember? <laughs> yes, that I do. Days. And it was that, and it was Heinz tomato soup. And then my mum would sort of get a piece of bread and, cr- and sort of cr- crumble it into it wasn't croutons, but it was no. you know fresh bread equivalent and put into the top. Good old and, soggy stuff. And the, yeah, and then I felt better already. But even just looking at the colour of that sort of takes me back. That's lovely. Yeah, Lovely soup, and mm-hmm. and you could use that for a dinner party, and it's it's just so effective and so good. Now you've got another soup there, which is sweet potato Sometimes and parsnip. Sometimes I love my job. I can't tell you. <laughs> right, okay, right, third one. So this is more than this looks more of a curry sort of. That's colour. got cumin in, oh, but okay. it's sweet potatoes, giving it the colour, of course. Yes, it's, right, so it's leeks got a, and celery. How do I describe that colour, like a beigey. 
I'm not doing it justice. What do I call that colour? Oh, Sandy? Ochre. Ochre. How about ochre? That's a better term. <laughs> Let's go ochre. So what have we got in here again? Uh, so you've got in there um, leek and you've got um, celery and sweet potato and... Um, parsnips of course and a yeah. bit of cumin right i'm gonna try i've got to be honest i don't know how i'm gonna feel about this because i'm not good on sort of any kind of spicy food it smells spicy but i would taste I don't it think it's that spicy okay. anna you'll be surprised it's quite sweet and delicate no that is a gentle flavor yeah it is a gentle favour and the nice, uh, nice thick, you know, I consistency. Can see the, the thickness but it wouldn't of that be my favourite. I'm thinking of the three. No, nope, that's fine. That's a, now know, go to me. the other savoury one, Anna. So we've got to talk. You mentioned slow cookers. New spoon. Hang on. <laughs> New spoon. On. Everyone spoon. out there who has or has not got a slow cooker, yes. go and get one. Get it out. Do you know what? My friend got me onto this because she's working all hours yeah. um, and she's often on an overnight shift. And when she gets home from you know work, everybody else is having breakfast, but she's going back to go to bed, and it's her main thing. She's not in the mood, though. She's tired. She's done a long shift. She's not in the mood to, to start from scratch. So she puts things, any old thing, frankly. She's, you know, she's, she's really it experimenting and puts it into her slow cooker before she goes off at night. And then when she comes back in the morning, she's got it's this lovely smell. On and low. It's a welcoming smell, yeah. So you've got pork. I thought you'd do something different. How Which about, am I looking at here? That's the other savoury one. Oh, yeah. You've got pork with cider and cream. Mm. Yeah, that's right up my street. That, uh, you can't taste the cider. I haven't even tasted yet, but I'm worried. Can that's been in it? the slow cooker, and you've got leeks and carrots and oh, celery. Oh, yeah. hello. <laughs> that is gorgeous. And get this, what's used to thicken it is actually peppercorn sauce mix. Stop it. How simple is that? So I can't talk because I'm having No, she's having a good time. <laughs> that and, is divine. And on, I've got a recipe leaflet available for these recipes we're talking about today. I've got a savoury one with the soups mm. and stews, and I've got a sweet one, which you're going to come on to in a moment. Um, so just tr- remind me again. So what's in this Sorry. one again? Just remind me. So we've got pork, cider. Pork, cider, uh, celery, oh. carrots, leeks, and um, nor sticking cho- nor chicken stock cubes chicken again. Chocolate. Some creme fraiche can of cider and a packet of pepper sauce mix and note no water was used in the making of this stew. no taste now delicious. i know in theory it's like you know when you go for wine tasting you're meant to like sip and spit. <laughs> no way no on way. Earth. i'm just going for the third that is divine that's absolutely my favorite so far okay mm. so um okay. you know stews Spot they're now. they're meant to mm. be rich so i did another stew beef stew with a tomato background or how about making it with just guinness <laughs> and get a really rich. Does that give that that gives that rich? It really gives Guinness. it a bit of oomph. And then put your dumplings in that, and you're away. Well, there's another thing you see. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, out of nowhere, you go from barbecues, and suddenly you think, "I want a dumpling." Exactly. I mean, who knew? <laughs> it's the cold weather, <laughs> and and I'm all about tantalising and tickling your tonsils and your taste buds. Oh right, okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be back with Dulcy we'll for more. Then, and you'll be able to get hold of these recipes if you fancy trying any of these. Uh, we're trying to inspire that one. It's so good. Uh, James Arthur and Impossible. 25 past 10, wafting gorgeous wintry uh, recipe smells around the studio. More on that to come. On the A417. On DAB Digital Radio. This, this. is BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Uh, Dulcie James is here then from Sirens as to cook, food therapist. And if you are sort of suddenly, uh, mentally, you've switched. It's amazing how your brain does this. Uh, mine certainly did. The minute I mentioned it, everybody else went, oh, me too. Uh, suddenly we're into winter mode and we want stews and casseroles and suet pudding. You might not have had that since you were, what, eight. Uh, but suet pudding suddenly. Uh, we're talking winter to food then with Dulcie who's brought in a great trailload of the most amazing things. Now this is interesting because you've got this as an alternative to bread to have with with what with, with your, your soup with, with soup or I suppose you could always have it with stews which is scones but not just there's all different varieties here. You've got like three flavours mini ones because like then that. you can pick and mix and it's cheap as chips to make a, a batch of scones. It doesn't take long does it? No I knocked thing. that up in less than 10 minutes last night. Yes well you know give or take if it was me you know make so it's <laughs> oh, half 15. an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so what um, is it? You've got sort of a middle one. Kind of one. Okay yeah, sun dried tomato and basil. Ooh, right let's have a go. So if you while you're eating so if you make a batch of scone and you've got the the mm. butter and the uh, flour oh, separate that and then add your flavors into different bowls so you've got sun-dried tomato and basil so just do it into threes and then you just yeah then add your flavors and the That's one on delicious. the your right i think i've got that right is mm-hmm. um whole grain mustard so it gives a real nice piquancy Yes, that's 
Makes it I'm interesting. Still got a She's still got a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one Never is cleanse the palate. Is uh, fresh rosemary and sultana. Mm. And I make bread like that. It, it is just use that flavoury. For savory, then. Yeah, yeah. Because the rosemary. I never thought of sultana in any sort of rosemary. Adds the sweetness of your next. cheddar and tomato. Mm. Good. Mm. Eh? Tasty. So this is stuff that you just sort of. T- try out this works this doesn't tweak have mm. you been doing this for years that's the way you cook oh i've been doing it for years oh, see, that really since i was 30 <laughs> i you, you know you know me well enough now but I, i'm a real passionate cook it's one of my top things in my life that i'm incredibly passionate about mm. uh, with the work that i do as well of course but the interesting thing is because my my mum and and it uh, it so frustrates me because I've still got her recipes. Well, what she wrote down, which she she didn't write that much down because she was one of those pinch of this, this bit, shake of that, um, and she, it always tasted fantastic. And every time over my entire life, it tasted the same. Yeah. But you try down the phone, you know, on a Saturday morning, Mum. How do you do your, you know, chocolate and orange cake or something? And she go, well, you know, it's like a little bit. Of the, but what's a little bit? What's a pinch? What's a, you know, <laughs> drove me crazy. And then you, with the basis of the recipes that I have got from her. I've tried to to do things because, as you well know through your work, memories of, of food and recipes yeah. from loved ones that you don't have, you know, that have died, can be so evocative. But Can't trying it. to nail it yeah. um, is so hard when you are that kind of fluid. When cook. you're fluid, <laughs> but we've spoken about before how um, you know food evokes memories, and certainly I work with someone at the moment who's got Parkinson and dementia. And when I start with the lady, then you see her literally lift up and I start talking. I started singing Dad's Army theme the other day and she (laughs) was there singing with. Yeah, whilst cooking. She was she was singing with me. Then we were talking about, well, when I was, you know, young and I had my children, I would cook so and so. And out came all these beautiful memories and you saw her whole face lift up. Yeah. So it's a great thing, food, cooking. Yeah, and I I was just talking to you off it, but I've just seen something which I'm going to order off Etsy in America, which I thought was a genius idea, and I thought you'd appreciate this too, Mm. which is a chopping board. But if you email them a handwritten recipe from your, you know, from whoever, but obviously in my case it was uh, sort of a a loved one, my mum, they will transpose and etch it into the chopping board yeah. and then you've got their writing with their recipe but on your chopping I thought what a lovely lovely idea that just absolutely so warms great. me that one. I love that mm. so I'm going to do that that would keep memories alive wouldn't it just yeah. and I mean food yeah and when when you've lost uh, the person when you also lost all those wonderful memories surrounding the, the, the great food that they did you know it's particularly poignant isn't it mm. so well the hard life continues because I've, I've the scones <laughs> tick right so what have we got next well got in the dishes stuff. you've We've got treacle sponge. Are we allowed to have treacle sponge ever again in our lives? Oh, you know, all course. this stuff we're meant to have just yogurts and fruit. And... Well, do you know what? <laughs> I'm from the generation where we had everything in moderation, but what we had was natural food that had, you know, just normal food. We didn't have sweet snacks in between. We didn't really have chocolates an awful lot. And yeah, Christmas. chocolate's meant to be, you know, a treat. It's isn't a it? treat. And now it's like every day or crisp the same, isn't it? For a lot of people. Yeah. Who, but after after a food. main meal, you know, my mum would always cook jam suet pudding. The recipe in my <laughs> recipe leaflet's got that. Um, and of course, with suet, if you put some sultanas in, you've got spotted dick. So, where you go with that? It's um, all the, you know, the pudding club at Morton Marsh is what they live and yeah. die on. People come from all over the country to go to that outside exactly. Morton because it's all about the uh, suet puddings and they parade them in. And when I'm teaching people to I'm cook, trying it. I'm you know, going in. just going in, um, people are mm. amazed how easy it is with a bit of time management to throw together a lot of food. But doesn't this. Um, doesn't this take hours of cooking, though, if you're going to do... No? Doesn't that took, it have to go and boil on the back no, burner for No, that's five minutes mix, you know, mixing up five minutes. You put it in a glass bowl, in the microwave, five minutes, job done. I'm sure that's dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, you couldn't get more simpler. And that's if, fatal, If anybody it? wants to be totally the lazy... Five-minute go- treacle pudding, what are you doing to us? <laughs> I'm hopefully encouraging a little bit slightly different type of sugar it's rather than the manufactured delicious. stuff. Um, and then you've got sticky toffee pudding. Well, it's, it's it's in there somewhere. There's plenty of sauce. The yeah. sticky toffee stuff's drowning it, which is a heaven. Well, and how many times do you go into a restaurant and you ask for sticky toffee pudding and out it comes oh, with, with hardly to- any sauce? That is so true. And you feel like going, excuse me, where's the sauce? I've ordered here? You know, why do you think I've ordered it? So anybody who's having that sticky toffee pudding delicious. at home, they have plenty of sauce, always. 
I haven't even got to the sponge yet. I'm still on the sauce. Yeah. So how long does this take to make then, this one? Well, the sauce takes about five or ten minutes tops and the um, mixing of the mixture is five minutes and it took about 40 minutes, baked it in the oven. Oh. Did you? Did you yeah, bake, bake it one? in the oven. Then when it comes out, you can if you're going to serve it straight away, then you pour mm. over the hot sauce and away you go. But remember, folks, when oh. you are serving my sticky toffee recipe to your guests or your family, put a gravy boat of sticky toffee mm. sauce by the side. More. Give them plenty. That is right. So far, to start, <laughs> I'm going to go with the tomato and basil soup, which is divine. That pork and cider, oh my stars! And I would definitely have this uh, sticky toffee pudding. To it is good, isn't with it? Extra sauce with extra sauce. So, if people want to do uh, these things, then obviously we can we can get the recipes to them, can't we? We can sort yep. that out and do, so if, people um, can have a go. If people want to email me by going through tastethememory.co.uk. Um, and email me and ask me, do they want the, the stews and soup recipe mm. leaflet or They'll do they want the want pudding? <laughs> they probably want it all. Um, I will pop it out in the post to them. No problem. Well, that's that's very kind because I know people are going to get all inspired. And why wouldn't you when it tastes mm. so divine? Um, you, you touched on some of the work you do, and I know you're busy doing loads of things. But one of the things you do is uh, taste the memory, which is sort of working. Well, you explain sort of in, in a nutshell. Okay. Taste the memory in a nutshell is I offer cooking sessions one to one or tandem. Okay, so that people can um, learn some new recipes or learn how I cook really quick with lots of simple recipes. Um, I also get out there and I do cooking demonstrations. So I entertain people. We have a lot of fun and I show a group of people just how you can put together the recipes that I use and and love. Um, And I'll do some talks. And I also work um, like cooking therapy. So um, if I'm working with an anxious client who's finding it difficult to tell me something, then I'll go and do some cooking with them. You see, because then you're you're both busy with your your hands and also with your eyes, and it's it's surprising how people might open up then when they're not in such an in, yeah. potentially intimidating situation. It's more it, it does work, doesn't it? It does work. Oh yes, it does. And um, one of my uh, previous clients, the well, one thing she said that helped her the most was making marmalade with me in the kitchen, huh. which she then was able to really unravel what was going on for her fascinating thank you so much for coming in you're not getting uh, this taken away because there's definitely that (laughs) sticky toffee and you've got christmas bread pudding there hiding under the table we haven't even got to the christmas bread but it says bread pudding but with a christmas twist in it yeah and it smells like christmas pudding and it's a people can come and buy it from me at the christmas craft fair in the parish church in sirencester for macmillan christmas craft fair saturday what time uh, so that kicks off at 11 o'clock to 4.30 and I look forward to seeing you all there. Come and see me and say hello. Yeah, you might want to take some of your recipes because people might want to pick well, them will. up there. <laughs> in Sirens, so that's a good way to do it. Uh, thank you so much for coming thank you, in Anna. and giving us some more inspiration for uh, winter foods and it's amazing how you sort of also, not just into winter mode but go back to your childhood, isn't it? Because, you know, as I say, we're not having these sort of things so much now but God, doesn't it take you back, you know, to when you'd get home and there was uh, definitely a pudding uh, after tea, as we called it, and after tea there was definitely pudding and it was probably going to be something like this absolutely delicious uh dulcie james thank you